Welcome to Chris Parkin Shooting Sports. This is the CZ600 range. Now this is the target and precision variant of the new 600 line from CZ and it shares some commonality and some changes but you'll have seen quite a few videos of the CZ600 more sporting variants on the channel already but this is specific to this rifle now so let's work through what it does do, what it doesn't do and why it's different. Starting at the front end, we have got one of Caesar's excellent cold hammer forged bow. It's 22 millimeters in diameter, 610 millimeters long, which is 24 inches. It's got four grooves inside and it's a one in 10 twist rate. So it will stabilize the heavier bullets. And I've had a lot of success, 168, 175 grain match bullets. Now this rifle, unlike the other ones, which come with either a two or a one MOA accuracy um, assurance with them, this one actually comes with a 0.75 MOA accuracy assurance. So that's using match ammunition. And you'll have seen on the video, I had no problem whatsoever proving that. And it was quite versatile with different types of bullet as well. But for brevity, we mainly used the 168 grain Hornady ELDM bullet, which is a superb tester in 308. <laughs> Now this one is in 308, it's also available in 6mm Creedmoor. I'm pretty sure new calibres and more calibres will become available, but all the information about this is available on CZ's website, I'll put the link in the description, and currently there's only the 6mm Creedmoor and the 308 available. I would be very surprised if more do not become available, especially things like the 6.5 Creedmoor, but it is based on the size 2 action and it's a steel action, and the steel action means you've got four screw holes on top to attach a standard Remington 700 fit Picatinny rail, which gives you a lot of scope mounting versatility. Moving back to the action, it's a six lug bolt, so offers 60 degree lift to cock the action. The handle length here is adequate and it's got a nice circular ball end and you can flick it open with the back of the hand, keeping your thumb at the base of the action here, which means that you disturb the rifle very much less when you are actually reloading it. To get the bolt out of the rifle, you might need to drop the cheek piece, but you can see it's toolless here. There's 30 millimeters of vertical travel and it's a nice slim profile, so you get excellent eye scope alignment on this rifle. So if I take the bolt out, pop the catch down there, that allows me to take the bolt out. You can see the six lugs and you can see the sort of semi-controlled feed bolt face. It's actually got a manual ejector, which is actually part of the spring here. And that spring there is what allows you to take the bolt head off the bolt if required to swap them. You'll see in the video the advantage of a manual extractor because if I draw the bolt back slowly, the case will just clip off the bolt face and it'll drop back in the port. But if I just pull it back quickly as normal, it'll fling the case as far and wide. That also has the effect that if you do particularly want to treat your brass very gently, you can manually eject every single one if you want to with a bolt speed no faster than this and just extract it from there. The action steel, the bolt is steel, action speed is very quick you can see that on the video i'm very happy with it and let's look at some of the other features now the safety catch is actually a through action safety catch it comes out of the tang just here so if i push that up from underneath that actually locks the bolt and locks the action if i want to unlock the bolt for a safe opening press the bolt release catch down we can open that otherwise if i'm ready to fire push that down this is a safe discharge and we've got nice single stage trigger 
The single stage trigger is adjustable in four weight settings and you can see here on the screw there's a little white dot and that will click in four positions with strong detents. Overall weight range is 600 to 1350 grams which is 22 to 48 ounces. I measured this one at 425 grams which is exactly 16 ounces and it is beautifully crisp. These are also internally adjustable if you ever want to take out any creep or anything that develops like that. Gives it an excellent trigger for the whole lifetime of the rifle. The barrel's threaded 18 by one. I was using a Wildcat moderator on it. You might use a muzzle brake, you might leave it as it is. Looking at the stock, this is the laminate stock. It's broad, it's got a flat base on it, and it's got a fully free floating barrel. It's stiff in all conditions and you don't have any problems with intermittent barrel contact. You can clamp it in a tripod, no problem at all. There is stippling along the forend here for grip. You've also got QD anchor points for studs on the left and right side, as well as two regular studs on the underside to put a bipod or another type of sling on. You'll also see on the underside it's hollowed out, which gives you weight saving if necessary, also allows a little bit more air to flow through and ventilate up past the sides. While this is upside down, I'll show you the magazine because this is a five round magazine, it's polymer, the rounds will click in the top, no problem at all, it's very easy and quick to load. That goes back in there, clicks in position. That is the release catch at the front, pops in, pops out, and obviously the other way up, it'll drop into the palm of your hand under its own weight. But if I flick that switch forwards, it's locked, you now cannot lose it. Just putting this back the other way up, if I flick it backwards again, pop it out and the mag drops into my hand. The upside of a magazine like this is that you can take it out of the gun to load it or you can load them in the gun. So if you want to, you know, put one back up round and click, you can do that fine, no problem. Another advantage, and you'll see this in the video, is if I want to add a single round, I can just pop that round in the ejection port, close the bolt and it will feed to the chamber for an accurate shot without any more plaque damage on the bullet. You'll see on screen now there's a picture of the action disassembled from the rifle. There's a bedding block within, the recoil studs within that which lock the action in place, and there are two action screws, front and rear, spanning the actual magazine well there. The front section here and the rear section of what you could call the bottom metal, which is actually polymer, both remove separately and are held in by those bolts. But the fit of the actual action into the stock is excellent and there's no movement whatsoever. If I slacken the front action screw, the barrel does not rise, which also implies that there's very little, if not no, stress inherent within the bedding of the rifle in the stock. This is superb. Looking at the rest of the stock, we've got a vertical pistol grip. It's about 90 millimeters reach from the trigger blade, so you get a really good extended position. And you can grip it with either your thumb over the top wrapped round or the thumb vertically, and it is ambidextrous. There's a slight palm swell for the right-hander. The cheek piece, as explained, has got 30 millimeters of vertical travel. So if I pop this back up roughly where I was using it before, that's there. It's a nice slender profile, so it fits under your cheek bone without displacing your jaw, and you can get good alignment on the scope. Length of pull is long at 373 millimeters, which is 14.7 inches. And there's a recoil pad at the back, which gives you good grip into your shoulder. There are more QD anchor points for slings on the sides, both the right side and the left side, which means you can carry the rifle if you want with a biathlon sling, which is super comfortable. And underneath, we've got a butt hook here, which means you can keep it well clumped into your shoulder, so bolt operation is less likely to disturb the rifle. On the underside, there is also a piece of Picatinny rail, which comes with a rubber cover on it. If you want to take it off, you could use that Picatinny rail for a monopod. With the rubber on there, it gives you a little bit more of a bag rider, and I prefer to shoot rifles like this with a soft rear bag. I can control the butt hook like that, I can squeeze the rear bag to get fine elevation control, and I'm very happy shooting it.
part of the reason you get the three quarter MOA assurance on this rifle, whereas the others have a one or even a two MOA assurance, is the fact that this one has just got a much more stable, much stiffer stock, it's a heavier barrel, and I suspect there's also the fact that this one's available in two calibers for which good quality match ammunition is available. There is also the fact that the bedding system within here is far more stable and is less likely to move throughout positional shifts with the rifle, and of course the stock is totally stiff, you can shoot it one-handed, you can load into the bipod, there's no flexibility, you can shoot it from a tripod stand or from bipod, and it is not going to bend, you do not get point of impact variations from different positions with it. I wouldn't be surprised in the near future if CZ launched a precision rifle version of this in an aluminium chassis with an Arca rail integral to it to let it comply with factory rifle rules because the action and barrel are certainly capable of the levels of accuracy and precision required. Overall length is 1140 millimeters, which is 45 inches, and overall weight is 4.6 kilograms, which is 10 pounds and four ounces. It is a heavy rifle. It's not something you're going to want to carry up a mountain or go deer stalking with, unless you really want to, but that stability is superb when it comes to target oriented environments, or even perhaps a long range varmeter, particularly in the six millimeter cream more cartridge. The rifle performs straight out of the box with match grade ammunition. If you hand load, you'll probably do even better from it. Um, it didn't require any kind of major run-in procedure and it was also quite easy to clean. Excellent heat treatment of the barrel means you don't get point of impact shift through longer shot strings. And yes, groups will open slightly, but they're not moving in specific directions. They're just sort of slightly opening up. When you get to about 15 rounds, it's still shooting sub MOA as long as the conditions externally are right and the shooter's doing the job properly. I did find with hand-loaded ammunition I got even more consistency from it and it's a gun I will happily keep shooting but would like to see it in the 6.5mm calibers. Well thank you for watching, please like, subscribe, comment and click the notification bell. Remember your comments are what drive me to make more videos for you. Please visit the show sponsors both the British Shooting Show and Military First and there is also a link and a promotional code for 5% discount for Military First in the description. This will last for six months from the day the video goes live. Thank you for watching, bye for now.